Okay, Sinclair Broadcasting uh, has been in the news because uh, they had all their anchors read this preposterous script about uh, what they called fake stories. It was their way of supporting Donald Trump and his charges of fake news against the rest of the media. Uh, it looked like hostage videos, we showed it to you yesterday. Uh, local news anchors all over the country reading the same script uh, that was uh, rightward leaning, uh, pro-Trump. Um, and uh, and to give you a sense of the scale of Sinclair, I told you yesterday they are the largest uh, television network in the country for local uh, stations. And if you don't know how those local stations work, I don't blame you, it's a little bit complicated. Uh, one station, one group will own the stations and then they will make a deal with affiliates like NBC and Fox in different markets. So Sinclair could own uh, hundreds of stations and some of them are CBS, ABC, NBC, Fox, etc. But more on the scale, the company owns or operates 193 TV stations in more than 80 markets across the country and reaches an estimated 38% of households. Uh, the Trump team talked about uh, how they made a deal with Sinclair during the campaign, they bragged about it. And they talked about how in really important swing states like Ohio, Sinclair through their local stations reaches a lot more people uh, than CNN or any of the other cable news outlets do. Uh, and they're huge in the South and the Midwest. And obviously that made a big difference in this election. Uh, so now uh, here's part of the script that they had folks read uh, on the air. The script read, unfortunately, some members of the media use their platforms to push their own personal bias and agenda to control exactly what people think. This is extremely dangerous to our democracy. Well, that is super ironic. Uh, because of course, that is exactly what they were doing. They were telling their local news anchors, don't do the local news in this case. You're gonna read from a script and we're gonna tell you exactly what to think. And indeed, it is quite a dangerous democracy. So now we have memos today from Portland, uh, where a local uh, executive there, a general manager, Robert Truman, the station KTU, made the situation very clear. You are not to cross Sinclair management. There will be significant consequences. So let me read from the memo to you guys. This is addressed to their staff, including their reporters. Please do not, and it is capitalized in Trumpian fashion, do not answer any questions or get into any discussions with callers as they try to navigate to someone internally. Most certainly don't talk to the press about the issue. Direct them to the website and press inquiries to me. Now, look. Uh, part of that is understandable, you don't want every person at the station going and speaking for the station because they might not know all the facts and, and you gotta let PR do their job and the general manager do his job. So I'm actually being more understanding than almost anyone else out there on this issue. Uh, on the other hand, when you do a hard ban on uh, speaking to the press when you are part of the press, let's note a little bit of irony there and, and I've been on all sides of this and I remember um, down in Florida when I worked in local news, I had a general manager tell me uh, that I had a hard ban and I was not allowed to talk to the press. So in some instances it makes sense, in some instances like this, there's an obvious reason why they're doing it. Uh, and because there's a lot of people leaking right now going, we hate this, well I'll get to that in a second. Uh, but he wanted to be extra clear, so Truman wrote, I will also remind you that giving statements to the media or sharing negative information about the company can have huge implications. Gee, I wonder what he's referring to, I can't quite tell. That's an obvious threat to fire folks. Now, there is one brave station um, and it is funny enough, a Fox station. It's a local Fox, not Fox News. Um, it's in uh, Madison, Wisconsin, and they put out this tweet saying that they are not going to participate. In response to the Sinclair message aired, MSN Fox 47, Madison did not air the Sinclair promotional announcement during our 9 p.m. news this weekend. Rather, we stayed true to our commitment to provide our Madison area viewers local news, weather, and sports of interest to them. And they clarified later that they not only did not run it at that time, but they never ran it. So we will track that station to see if there are, quote, huge implications for them. I fear that they there eventually will be, uh, likely when the press attention dies down a little bit. Uh, but Sinclair management is gonna wanna send a message to not cross them. And when they say something is must run, uh, they, they probably mean it, given they've been doing this for decades. They, they're the guys who aired the Swift Boat uh, veteran attack ads against John Kerry. The preposterous ads uh, 
questioning John Kerry's valor when he had several medals from Vietnam. And George Bush, of course, famously ran from Vietnam. So did Donald Trump, so did Dick Cheney, so did Tom DeLay, so did Newt Gingrich, so did all those chicken hawks in the Republican Party. But in an effort to bring you the truth, St. Clair viciously attacked John Kerry, the actual Vietnam War hero. So they've been doing this for a long time and they've been firing people for a long time if they don't go along. In fact, I'll get to that at the end, that is very interesting. First, I'm gonna go to Fletcher Fisher. He's actually not representing people that are on air, but other people that work at Sinclair, they also had to sign these onerous contracts and they also are forced not to talk about this issue, whether they're doing lighting, camera work, engineering, etc. And Fletcher says they're in the same boat that every anchor is with Sinclair. If they complain about something, they are gone. So that's the business manager at a local union. Uh, explaining that and, and his uh, interactions with them. Here's an anonymous Sinclair employee saying, they're certainly not happy about it, about the situation. Uh, the anchors aren't. It's certainly a forced thing. So no question that uh, it is being forced upon them. Now, uh, Bloomberg has got their hands on a copy of a contract that uh, a lot of these workers have to sign, including the non-air people. So. Uh, If they're not on air, I don't know why in the world they'd have to sign this. Even for the on air people, it is preposterous. But this is the threat that they hold over their head to make sure that they are not allowed to speak. According to copies of two employment contracts reviewed by Bloomberg, some Sinclair employees were subject to a liquidated damages clause for leaving before the term of their agreement was up. One that requires they pay as much as 40% of their annual compensation to the company. Now, that is whether they choose to leave or they are fired. So if they don't read the script exactly as is ordered by management in a pro-Trump and pro-Republican way, they will be fired. If they do read it, they've completely violated any kind of journalistic ethics that they had. But if they're fired, they have to pay up to as much as 40% of their salary back to their employer. Well, who's got that kind of money, kind of money lying around? Certainly not a lot of the news anchors. I don't know anybody who does, let alone the people who are not on air. I mean, because part of the BS excuse here is, well, you want to non-compete, and you don't, and so you don't want people running to the your competitor that's across the street and going on air with them, and they take your best anchors after you invest in them. I understand that concept, but to say that you then owe money back to them, 40% of your salary up to, and including paying back some bonuses. And then there's more. They're also subject to a six month non-compete clause and forced arbitration. And the threat of those lawsuits, even if these contracts are are not valid and they are really onerous. um, Well, again, which lighting guy or even a local reporter in Madison, Wisconsin, for example, has enough money to hire a lawyer and then if they lose, pay all that money on top. That's how they threaten them, not only with their job, but with all the money that they have and and potentially to wipe them out economically. By the way, it is not standard. For example, no one here at the Young Turks that's on air has to pay back 40% of their salary if they leave. That's preposterous, okay? So it's done by people who want to enforce their ideology and call it journalism. So. Now, give you an example of what happens if you violate this. Well, we go to James Beaton. He was a a reporter for them in West Palm Beach. And uh, Bloomberg explains, Beaton, who worked as a reporter for the CBS affiliate, said that while he was at the station, he was ordered to do man on the street interviews that he felt were politically biased. Now, quoting Beaton, I'd ask loaded questions like, how much do you disagree with Obama this year? It was disguised as real journalism, but I'm a Republican and I was still pissed by it. Now, that's a real journalist. Now, by the way, they drove him out of journalism because they did the non-compete on him, so he couldn't work at another station. He was so disgusted by this whole thing. And then they sued him for uh, his salary. Uh, that he just left journalism altogether, now does consulting. So uh, one more quote from James Beaton that I think is incredibly illustrative here. He explains, what we saw over the weekend is classic Sinclair. Those reporters and anchors are waking up and they're humiliated and feeling depressed. They don't wanna face the lawsuit that I'm facing. See, Sinclair wanted to send a message. That's why they sued a guy like James Beaton. Do you think they need the tiny amount of money, tiny to them because they have billions of dollars, a giant amount of money to Beaton, that's why he's fighting it all the way. But do you think they need that money? No, that is to threaten and intimidate every person that works at Sinclair. You will not do journalism, you will do exactly as you're told. So 
look up uh, in your area, what's a Sinclair station and buyer beware. What they're giving you is not news, it is generally propaganda. You just watched the video by the Young Turks, home of the revolution. If you'd like to get a lot more than that, get the full show by becoming a member, tytnetwork.com slash join.